What's up guys, welcome to this tutorial for how to use adapters metric AB from Plugin Alliance. My name is Nate Rabe and I'm of Protoculture. And uh, this is a plugin that I recently got my hands on that I've been totally blown away by. Uh, it's a fairly simple concept, um, by no means revolutionary, but this is the most sort of feature rich iteration of such a plugin that I've ever come across so far. Um, and it deals with referencing. Now, referencing is an incredibly important part of mixing, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, especially when you are becoming fatigued from spending long hours mixing your tra your music, uh, you can lose track and perspective very, very quickly. And it's essential to have a reference um, of some sort set up so that you can just kind of guide yourself back to where you should be heading. Uh, I've used um, different reference plugins in the past. I've also, uh, you can do the cheap route and just uh, drag reference files into your into your project as well. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you do just need to make sure that they're not passing through any master bus or anything. You'll need to set up an extra, an extra bus for them to kind of pass reference files without any effects. Um, but... Using a plugin like this, there's a, a number of, of added features which have really, really um, become very handy for me. And uh, we're going to take a look at all of that right now. Uh, this first video, we're just going to quickly focus on setting it up in our project um, and just the play modes and just basic operation of ABing the tracks. And then uh, one of the things that uh, Metric AB offers that, I, uh, that I've really come to love about this plugin is the sort of comprehensive suite of analyzers that are built into it as well and we'll cover the more in-depth stuff regarding the analyzers in the second part of this tutorial so for now um personally i like to in cubase you have the option of um uh, loading plugins into your control room uh which is like your master channel uh, in Cubase, your control room is actually separate from your master, so you can load Metric AB into the, if, if you go to your, well, let's just check it out in the mixer page actually, because this is where it used to, most people would find it here. You've got your metering and your control room, and your control room would normally look like this, with the down mix presets, if you're doing surround sound, etc. like that. Uh, if you switch to inserts, you have insert slots here that you can add, um, plugins to your control room settings. Um, not sure how this would apply to other DAWs. I don't know if they're like stuff like Ableton. I don't think you'd have a control room set up like this. In that case, the ideal spot for Metric AB to go would be on your master bus, your stereo out. But obviously just make sure that it's sort of towards the end of your inserts. You don't want anything interfering with, uh, with what's coming out of the reference plugin at all. It should be your last plugin um post fader etc so uh we have ours set up in the control room here which for me is just easy because i can always access it uh my control room is always open in the arrange page uh, i switch between that and the media cool um once we open here one thing that i really love about this uh, that i have missed in some of these kind of plugins before in the past is the ability to load tracks uh, at the same time. Oh, pardon me. I'm just quickly looking for a folder here, which, okay. So, uh, I have a folder on my hard drive here with a few tracks that I've put in. Um, if we go to Metric AB, we can just click and drag all of them and uh, drop them in. And it'll do multiple tracks at the same time. You can even drag an entire folder into Metric AB and all the uh, audio files inside will get lined up automatically. So now we have uh, three reference files to begin working with. Um, you can change reference files by just clicking on them here. And each one has settings uh, for itself. So you can have different play modes and stuff that, uh, enabled for different tracks that you're referencing as well. So in essence, the, the, the absolute basics of this plugin is, um, we'll, we'll just take a look, oh, you can uh, sort of minimize it over here. Uh, you're gonna be having your current mix that you're working on playing. 
which would be your A mix. So when this is blue, we're listening to what we're currently working on. And you will be able to flip between that and whatever reference file you have selected. So we can... Cool. So that's that's the, the, the essential function of this plugin, is to be able to hear the difference between stuff that you're working on. Um, now what I want to do is just quickly look at this initial playback page, uh, because these are sort of the essential functions, and then we're going to take a look in the second video at all the um, analyzer sections as well. Uh, but let's quickly look through the play modes. You have a number of playback modes that you can use. Um, the latch, which is, which is the default mode, uh, basically latch syncs to your transport. So when you push play in your DAW, uh, the reference file that you have selected will begin playing from wherever you last left off. So you can see there, it starts playing and you can jump around manually. Then you have Q mode, which is very much the same as latch, except Q will start from a specific point that you set every time you flip from A to B. So what we can do is set up a Q at this position here. Uh, we'll hit play. Now watch what happens when I flick back again. Every time I flick from A to B, it'll restart from that cue point. Um, and then when you stop your transport, it'll stop as well again. So there it's playing. And it restarts every time I flick across. Uh, sync, this is very handy for me as well. Especially when you're working on like dance music where you've got a similar kind of uh, arrangement for all the tracks. Um, this will just sync to your playhead. So wherever my playhead is in Cubase, it'll sync to that in metric AB. So you can see if I want to play from here, they're synced. Lastly, you have manual mode, which is exactly what it says it is. Uh, you do not, uh, when you push play in the DAW, does not necessarily start here. You have to start this manually, like such. Um, and then you saw the cue points that we have set up, uh, you can also turn these cue points into loops. Uh, when you hit the loop button like that, it'll give you a loop that you can drag through. You have some options to divide the loop, and multiply the loop, and uh, you have a rewind button, a play button. Rewind will send it back to the beginning of the track. We'll skip the filter section for now. We're going to come to that in the next video. Uh, another fantastic feature about this is the match function. Um, so you may have noticed now that the content that we're playing, uh, the B section is a ton louder than what we're working on um, in our project. Now let's just get out of manual mode, we'll go to sync. So that's because this uh, is mastered, which is generally the case when you're going to be referencing stuff. You're going to be referencing mastered material with um, uh, non-mastered material. And the problem with this is there's a psychoacoustic phenomenon that anything that's louder is going to sound better. So by definition, referencing with a master file, it doesn't do you any good. Even if, the, even if your mix is 10 times better, the mastered file that you're listening to because it's louder will always be the preferable one. So that doesn't help us much unless we can match the volume, but fortunately Metric AB makes it super simple for us. All we do is just hit match and uh, it analyzes for a while. You have to, sorry, it, it will fail if you don't have it playing. Um, you have the two of them playing, hit match. And there you go, it's dialed in a setting of minus 7.8. So you do need to match, um, take note that you, you need to match uh, similar sections of audio. So uh, if we switch this to latch, let's just make sure. Okay, so we were pretty much um, okay because we are uh, A being a section with just the kick and the bass. And this section here yeah, would be pretty much just the kick in the bass. So they should be fairly fairly close now volume wise. Uh, we can just check that out. Much better. So now you can actually really start to 
notice the difference between the two mics because the volume is uh, pretty much the same. Um, you can update that volume match as well uh, for sections like if we were working in the sort of ambient section in the beginning. If you update that again, uh, it's pretty much found exactly the same. So it does differ from time to time um, depending on which section you're analyzing, but in this case it's found exactly the same one, which is great. So now we have a volume matched um, reference material. You will need to do the same for other um, uh, reference files that you have because the settings are independent from one another. So yeah, you have a game. One that's much louder. And there you go. You can see it's uh, it's actually, th this is uh, quite good. You can see it's found a very similar setting to uh, what it did with the last one, which just goes to show that these mastered files are all pretty much the same levels. There we go. So now we have all of them volume matched and we can reference away and uh, yeah, see exactly what's going on with our mix. So uh, that about covers it for um, for the setup and the basic sort of playback and, and uh, referencing section. Um, I mean, you have a few, uh, if you click on the files here, you have a few options to remove audio files. You can locate them in Finder. Uh, you can also save presets. Um, up here and uh, so you can quickly load up banks of, of reference material. I tend to set it up differently every single time though um, but yeah you can save banks of, of presets as well if you need to. Alright, um, in the next video we're going to quickly take a look at um, at the more in-depth um, analyzer section as well and uh, I'll show you what we can do with that. So I'll catch you in the next video and cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.